Hey everyone! In today's episode, we're going to learn how to add depth of field to our images. This can help us to control what is in focus and what is out of focus on the renderings. We're going to start the interactive rendering. This will allow us to have a real-time visual of all the changes we do. We're going to press F10 in our keyboard to open the render setup. Then, in the Scene tab, General Settings, press Start Interactive. After this, we need to enable the depth of field. To do this, select the Corona camera. Then, go to the Modify panel to see all the camera options. In the Depth of Field and Motion Blur section, enable the Depth of Field checkbox. I also recommend to have your top view visible. This is going to help us to visualize the target and object distance to the camera. To control the strength of the depth of field, we're going to use the F stop number. In this example, the exposure mode is set to simple exposure. If you're using Corona Render 7, this is called global exposure. With this option enabled, we can change the F stop number without affecting the overall exposure of the image. With low numbers, we're going to have a narrow depth of field or more objects out of focus. For example, if we change the F number to 1, we can see how the image is affected and most objects are out of focus. If we increase this number to 4, we can see that we still have a narrow depth of field, but the background objects are a bit more visible. We're going to change the F number to 8 and 16 and compare it with the previous one. We can see that we have a deep depth of field with fewer objects out of focus. To continue with this example, we're going to use 4 for the F number. We can modify the focus distance using the camera target. This will allow us to control where the depth of field starts and the objects in focus. To do this, we have two options. For the first option, we need to open the viewport display section of the camera and modify the target distance parameter. With low numbers, we can have the objects close to the camera in focus. And with a high number, we can get the objects in the back of the camera in focus. The second option, and the one I recommend, is by using the override focus in the depth of field section of the camera settings. This is going to enable two new options. The first one is value. This is the same as the target distance we saw earlier. The second one is object. This can help us to select the object we want to be on focus. This is a great option if we're planning to move the objects around the scene and we want the same object in focus. It is also possible to control the bulky effect of the image. This is going to define the quality of the areas of the render. We can control this option globally in the Render Setup Camera section or individually in the Camera Settings Bulky section by selecting the Override option. The first option for the shape is circular. We can see how the shapes of the out-of-focus object change to circular. This is especially visible in the highlights of the image. In this example, to properly show the effect, we're going to create a few small lights. If we change the shape to bladed, we can control the number of points. For example, if we select three, we can see how the shape is changing to a triangle. Selecting four is going to create a square shape, and so on. With the rotation option, we can rotate the out-of-focus highlight. We can also change the shape to custom. This will allow us to select our own bulky pattern by selecting a black and white image. In this example, we can see how selecting a star shape is going to create this in the bulky effect. And the last section is the advanced effects. The first option, center bias, control the transparency towards the center of the edge. With positive values, we can increase the amount of blur in the image. And with negative values, we can decrease the blur, creating a wider depth of field. With the vignetting option, we can create a cat eye effect on the image. We can see how a black frame is created. This is usually an effect that happens on wide angle lenses. In this case, both positive and negative values produce the same effect. And the last option, anisotropy is going to affect the aspect ratio of the box. Positive values create a horizontal effect and negative values stretch the bulky vertically. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to click the like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. 
and thank you for watching.